Hi everybody, welcome back and thanks for watching. In this video, we are talking about the M7 rifle, the military's next generation combat rifle. So the military has chosen the M7, the SIG M7, as the new military standard rifle. And it has had some problems and I've voiced those concerns and pointed out what these problems are most likely going to be. And looks like they're starting to address some of those problems. So first thing that they're addressing is the weight, which was a big concern, not only from me, but from many people in general, especially those who are actually field testing it. They are noticing that it is quite heavy and they decided, you know, what? we need to fix this. I thought you were um, trying to lose weight. <laughs> Lay off me, I'm starving. So they decided to lighten the M7. So how did they do this? They uh, took some of the internal parts, they lightened those up, they um, thinned or slimmed out the hand guard, so it made that a little bit lighter. But the main weight loss is coming from the barrel. So they're going from a 13-inch barrel down to a 10.5 to 10-inch barrel. So they're dropping a lot of weight just from that 3-inch uh, chunk of barrel. Now, this is a good thing but now it raises different problems, strange problems, things that I wonder about. So one of the reasons why they chose the M7 and then specifically the 6.8 by 5.1 cartridge was they were wanting to get very high velocity out of a shorter overall uh, rifle platform. So they needed that 13 inch barrel in order to reach the high velocity that they wanted in order to defeat some high end body armor. Well, now that we are cutting off about three inches of barrel, we're dropping in velocity as well. And we're not getting to that 3000 feet per second mark, mark that they actually wanted. So my question now is, if it wasn't that big of a deal to get that high velocity, why did we go this route anyway? Couldn't we have just stuck with something like this? So the AR-10 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor? Because right here I have a 10-inch barrel chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. We're getting a very short overall length. We are getting decent velocity. We're not getting to that 3,000 feet per second. But the M7 isn't going to achieve that now either. So why, why even spend the money on it when we could have just gone with something like this or even just gone with the 308, the 762 by 51 and shortened it and then just said, this is now your standard issue rifle. It's just odd that they would put so much emphasis on, well, the reason we're doing this and we're spending all this money and the reason we're going with SIG and the M7 is because we're able to achieve that 3,000 feet per second and now we're going to be able to increase the range and increase the penetration that we're getting when, we're, when it comes to dealing with high-end body armor. Now they're getting rid of that in order to lighten the platform. So was it really that important to begin with? It doesn't really seem like it. So now we have a, well, the M7, I, I mean, I think it's a pretty cool rifle. DMR rifle is what I think it should be. I don't think it should be the standard issue. But if we really want to go that way, here we go. This, this would have been the easy fix right here. So we have, uh, I mean, I would say the 6.5 Creedmoor is the way to go. And then now we have a rifle that is capable of shooting further than the 5.56, the M4. Uh, it's a larger round. It has great ballistic coefficiency, and you're going to be able to increase the range, increase your penetration, and increase the overall energy that you are actually putting down range. And the 6.5 Creedmoor really doesn't have that much recoil. 
So it it it's it's pretty manageable. Um, and then when we're looking at what the M7 is producing recoil wise, we can see it is packing quite a punch on the user end. So yeah, I don't know why they did they didn't uh, just go with that or like I had originally said I thought they should have gone with is something like this. This is the Robinson Armament XCRL. It is a little bit heavier, but it is smaller, it's slimmer, and it comes in many different calibers. So the caliber I think they should have chosen was the 6.5 Grendel, which is what this one is currently chambered in. I would also say that a 6mm arc would be a great option as well. So going with this platform, you get the uh, lighter recoil, you get the extended range, uh, you get better uh, ballistic coefficients, and you're basically keeping it within the same platform. And if you really needed it to, you could have just rechambered, rebarreled the M4s and 6.5 Grendel or the 6.5 Arc, I mean the 6mm Arc. So these options were available, they were cheaper, they were readily available, and it would have been pretty simple to just switch over to that. So, I mean, with this change, while I think it's a necessary change to lighten the rifle, it kind of adds a new problem onto it. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but it goes against what they were trying to achieve, which was that higher velocity, extending the range, and being able to combat the high-end armor. So reducing that weight, reducing the length of the barrel, we kind of get rid of that. So what's the benefit now exactly that we weren't able to get out of 6.5 Creedmoor or 6.5 Grendel, 6mm arc, or even going with a uh, heavier 5.56 with a, um, a larger powder charge in there. I know Shell Shock, I believe is the company. But they're you know producing a different alloy and then so they're able to get higher pressures with that so why the change at all and then on top of that you still have all the other problems uh less ammunition heavier ammunition yeah i mean i i don't really see a benefit now just i mean this or this would have been really good solutions that would have cost much, much less and gotten the overall desired effect. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is the M7 going to go down the same path that the SCAR went, where it never really got utilized at all? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, we'll see you later.